What's going on Clash Bashers? Rocky here today and today I used 19 sneaky goblins in my war attack and I 3 starred. Welcome back to the channel for another episode. Today we're back on the Town Hall 14 and we're going to be taking a look at Town Hall 14 War Attack. I've seen a few people asking like what are people using at Town Hall 14? What kind of strategies are good at Town Hall 14? So what I'm going to do here today is we're going to show off this last war from Mad Ram uh, where we had a pretty good war. We got 72 out of 75 stars. I had a nice little six pack showing off with the Lalo. But I'm going to show you guys what some of the Mad Ram guys are using and kind of give you a feel for what we like to use in our clan in war right now at town hall 14 and before we hop into the war attacks i'm gonna be upgrading a lot of stuff tomorrow on this base i, I know some of you guys are like oh bash you got five builders what are you doing this is gonna be tomorrow's video of me upgrading big rock and i think we're gonna actually finish off the unbreakable achievement here i only got 16 defenses left so if you guys want to check that out make sure you subscribe and have those notifications on that way you don't miss it and while you guys are at it don't forget to leave a like on the video let's see if we can get to 2,000 likes on today's video so let's go ahead and hop into the reason why you may have clicked on this video. I used 19 sneaky goblins in this attack, and that's not an exaggeration. Honestly, I should have just rounded it up to 20. 20 would have been a nice round number. But the reason I used so many sneaky goblins is quite simple this setup right here. We got the clan castle exposed and the town hall exposed. With four sneaky goblins, I can take out the clan castle without pulling any of the clan castle troops. And then I believe it's like seven sneaky goblins, depending on what traps and stuff are around, to take down the town hall so that's exactly what i'm going to do here i'm going to use uh 11 12 sneaky goblins to take out the clan castle and take out the town hall that way i don't have to worry about it i mean that's that's pretty gg we do get the tornado pool right there also so i don't have to worry about the tornado trap a little bit later in the attack like that's going to be really really nice once that tornado is done spinning we're going to throw in some more sneaky goblins uh, about five here i think we could have got away with just using one but i throw in two more and then once the town hall is down i'm going to go ahead and go with the houdini which is going to be super wizard with inside of a blimp with the invisible spells and this is going to be really effective i almost messed this up because i put my blimp a little bit higher or lower than i should have i should have put it a little bit higher on the base but i'm able to drop it into this compartment and with the rage and the invisibility spells we're going to be able to go ahead and get down that scatter shot get down the inferno get down the queen and just get massive value from our blimp right here and with the town hall and the clan castle being down that's pretty massive value guys look at this we get so much up and then the rest of the sneaky goblins are just going to be used to set the funnel and set the pathing for the heroes so we're going to see those sneaky goblins just kind of coming in here i want the heroes to get into this compartment here with the eagle so that's why i brought all those extra sneaky goblins i also brought the baby dragon because i thought i could clear out this whole side right there which that baby dragon does crazy work and then we're going to try to sneak a super wall breaker right in here to get to that compartment which it did and it opens that up really nicely uh so we're just going to run all this through here i'm trying to cut the king off here with that balloon uh the sneaky goblin's going to go ahead and work through there uh the king's going to pop his ability and then he's going to take out those two buildings and then come back and tank for the queen and at this point i was like well we might as well just throw the royal champion in here because this base is pretty crushed if i get the eagle down it is definitely destroyed and this is one of our favorite attacks in mad ram right now we got a lot of guys that really like the houdini lalo where we use you know the sneaky are the super wizards inside of the blimp not necessarily the sneaky goblins but the super wizards inside of the blimp to set up some nice pathing and get a lot of value and then i would i would honestly say probably drag that is the most favorite strategy in mad ram overall right now uh, but really like with the value i got from my heroes and the sneakies and everything this base was crushed. It didn't stand a chance. It's pretty much just balloon cleanup here at this point. We can freeze through that multi. We hit the warden ability, and there's not much left of this base, guys. Freeze in there. I could have swagged out some spells if I want to. Uh, you see, we got plenty of stuff left over. We can get this one down, and that's going to be a three-star. So that's the attack where I used 19 sneaky goblins to get a three-star. But let's check out some other attacks from some of the other guys in Mad Ram and see what they're liking to use. Right now in Mad Ram, I would say that Drag Bat is our favorite strategy as a whole clan. I could probably go through this war and probably find eight to ten Drag Bats that were performed this war. Uh, and let's break down this one here from JJ. Uh, we're going to use a couple of Electro Dragons here on the right-hand side, and this is just going to be used to funnel out and then we'll have the heroes come in on the top side and all this is going to do is just create a nice narrow pathway for those dragons to work through the middle of the base get to the stuff like those scatter shots get to like the multi-target infernos no multi-target infernos on this one get to the town hall but kind of get right to 
the core of that base and take out some of those key defenses so that the bats can sweep in a little bit later and clean it all up. Now, one thing I will say about JJ's head is I think he should have changed the CC from a Yeti Bomb into a Dragon Balloon CC uh, just because he's flying it right into the Clan Castle and he ends up pulling the Clan Castle, which is a Hound, which can sometimes stall your dragons. But besides that, like this one was pretty crust. So we're going to see the Yeti Bomb fly in here, and we see that Lava Hound pop up. And again, that's where you can run in a dragon with a few balloons rather than a Yeti Bomb, so you don't have to worry about pulling that Hound, especially if a clan's pulling a lot of Hound CCs. Uh, that's just one way to get around it. We're going to see the Royal Champion come in at that top side just to get down that uh, Wizard Tower. The Eagle Artillery is going to go down here from the Dragons working through the middle, and there's really not going to be too much splash left on this one. Right now, like, singles at Town Hall 14 are kind of ridiculous. Like, they just get overwhelmed and batted or just overwhelmed with witches. It's pretty crazy. He's going to run in the bats from the backside, and all of his freezes can be used pretty much in the same location right over here to freeze those bows and freeze that wizard tower. He did use one on the bows over here, but the rest are just going to come in here and freeze up that wizard tower, freeze up those bows, and it's going to allow him to get through this base really, really nicely. Now, he does get a little bit of a close call, a little bit of a scare here, as one of the minions are going to actually pull out a red air mine here, which is going to take out all the bats. If we see this, I think it's like right about here. Uh, yeah, the air mine comes up and targets the bats rather than the minion, which is a little bit awkward. But that happens from time to time. But he still had plenty of stuff up to clean this up. But like I said... A lot of guys loving the drag bat right now in Mad Ram, uh, and it's it's crushing. Like, there's a, a lot of really good drag bat attackers in Mad Ram. Another attack that we see really powerful at Town Hall 14 and used a little bit here in Mad Ram is the Inferno Baby Dragon attack. This attack is really, really fun to watch. It's not one I'm great with, uh, but Marco had a really nice attack using the heroes to go ahead and take down the Town Hall and then just using those Inferno Dragons to work throughout the base. You'll see a lot of skeleton spells with this one. This is on purpose. So skeleton spells are going to be used to distract defenses, to distract heroes, distract all kinds of stuff on the base, which will allow the Inferno Dragons to kind of work through here. So since he's going to go ahead and work through here with his heroes and get the Town Hall down, he can go ahead and use his blimp over here to take down the Eagle Artillery, which I love this play right here. So Town Hall is going to fall. Uh, we do notice the uh, Inferno Dragons working through here. Uh, the one thing here is he's going to pull out the rest of the Clan Castle, which is going to be a Lava Hound with that Yeti Bomb. Uh, but he's going to go ahead and work through there, get that air defense, get that Igor artillery out, which is going to be huge. And then he holds on to his Royal Champion here. And this is an attack you'll see quite a few different Town Hall 14 players use just because it's so, so strong right now. Here comes that Royal Champion in at the top side, just going in to uh, work on the air defense right there. And notice those skeleton spells, just keeping like the scatters distracted, keeping even the expos distracted. So this Royal Champion just come in here and get some massive value. The skeleton spell usage on this one is really fun to watch. And one thing I have an issue with is I always blow through my skeleton spells way too quickly, but uh, Marco, AKA Skeens, does a great job and always crushes with this attack. So I wanted to showcase this one for you uh, because man, this was a fun one to watch. That was beautiful and it's a really fast attack to see as well. Now throughout this war, we did see some traditional attacks like the Flint Special, which uses the Super Go Wee Wee basically. We did see some hybrid, uh, but Tannis, which is Flint's second account, is actually gonna mix it up a little bit here. He's gonna go with this Yeti Witch uh, super wizard attack. We saw this one in a war against us and it was really really strong You basically just throw it all in and then let the bats kind of work through here uh, And man this one worked out really nicely for him here So I wanted to highlight it. This is something a little bit different than what we normally use But that's what we're always trying to do is adapt and get better at multiple attack strategies And this one's just really fun to watch uh, So the log launcher is going to basically open up the whole middle of the base Allowing the heroes and the troops all to work through here uh, Get a little bit of damage there on the town hall The queen's going to follow in behind right there And then the king as well going to follow in And then we got a few yetis along the outside Once that king goes in, he's going to take down the town hall and then it's all just going to come down to the bats. Notice seven bats and four freezes, along with the Royal Champion still in hand. So plenty to take this base down still. And this one, man, the, the one thing about this attack, I will say, from what we've tested, is it's usually either a three-star 
or a one star. Like it's it's pretty dicey. It's it could be real hit or miss. Uh, but go to go ahead and run those bats in. Use those freezes here on the wizard towers on that single target inferno. Notice he's got the world champion working in there. He's actually not even going to have enough freezes to get through that multi by the time he freezes the wizard tower. He was being a little bit safe there with the freeze just to make sure. He got out in front, but check this out. Pops the Royal Champion's ability to get a little bit of damage on the multi-target Inferno so that the bats can finish it off. So trying some new stuff, getting through here, getting a three-star. you love to see it, guys. So a lot of different attacks being used in Mad Ram right now. And that's, that's really like what I like to see. A lot of variety, a lot of different stuff, along with the traditional checks like the hybrid and the, and the flint special, which you guys have seen in videos before. Those are no different. But a lot of little different armies, a lot of variety being used here. So there you have it, guys. I used 19 Sneaky Goblins in my attack, and I three-starred. It was really fun. Uh, but there's also a lot of other great strategies that are being used at Town Hall 14, and there's a lot of variety here in Mad Ram. We'll wrap up the video here today right now and if you guys want to come back tomorrow we're going to be spending all that loot with our sneaky goblins and finish the unbreakable achievement hopefully you guys did enjoy this one thank you guys so much for watching you guys have a great day keep on clash bashing while wow, you watch that whole video here's another video that youtube thinks you'll like and here's a playlist of similar videos